In last session, um, I tried to just give you a very basic um, introduction to the Bible as a whole. In this lesson, I want to kind of break down the history um, and just kind of show you how things fit into the bigger to the bigger story. Um, and as we hit certain books, I'll try to bring it up again, just to kind of so you kind of see the flow of of what's going on. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so this is the this is where in the world um, the events of the Bible happened. Um, if you look on this big map down here, you can see that this is Africa here. Here's Europe over here. We've got India and Asia over here. Okay, and o over here we've got Russia and whatnot. Um, and right here is Israel. So if you look here. This is it blown up here. I think this is uh, modern day Turkey, Iran, and Iraq and whatnot over here on this side. Um, Saudi Arabia down there. Um, and here's Egypt. Okay. So, um, uh, so the events of the Bible really happen with, um, with Abraham, is when we really start to get to specific places. And Abraham came from right here around the city called Ur, okay, um, and he traveled up, 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 and here's Haran right here, okay. It's important to remember that people back then didn't have things like Walmart and whatnot. They didn't have those kinds of things. So civilizations would build around whether there was water there, whether there was good um, land to, to, to uh, plow in, whether, the, you know, whether they'd get a good crop, their life really depended on it. Um, so, uh, and you'll notice that with even like the highways and whatnot um, from back then, um, the highways will be based on um, uh, really in, in some areas the land would dictate how they would go. Okay, um, so what that means is that there'd be like ravines or whatever, and pretty much you follow this ravine and that is the highway because there is you, you're not going to jump and climb over every single hill. Um, it's just a total waste of time, of effort, if you even could get your flock over it. Um, so the land really dictated where you would go. And then even when um, you knew where you were going, um, so you'll see the, the water go up here, right here. This is the Euphrates, and this is the Tigris. Um, and you see a lot of these cities cropping up along the uh, water line. And that is because people... Um, you know, once again, you can't go to the store for your water. Water is a big factor in, in choosing where you're going to um, set up shop, basically. Oh, my mouse keeps going dead. Um, and so then this is the land of Israel here. You've got uh, the Dead Sea there, the Sea of Galilee up here. You've got um, the vast wasteness that they that they traveled through. Um, and then Egypt over here and whatnot. So there's your basic outset. So uh, first things first, um, the Bible picks up. Um, at the beginning of creation, and it, it goes through some events uh, such as the Tower of Babel and, and and the flood and all that. But then, starting in about chapter 12, the whole vibe of Genesis just kind of changes, and it picks up with Ur. Um, well, Abraham, well his name was Abram then. God changed it to Abraham later, but he he comes from this little place right here. If I can get my mouse to go, there it is, called Ur. And what had happened in this area, you see that flock of cities there, is there were some invaders called the Gutians. And there were some problems with, with these invaders, and, and long story short, they ended up being driven driven out. But it is in this setting, somewhere in that setting, that Abraham leaves Ur with his father um, and, his, and his wife, and Lot comes as well. Really just their whole household moves out. Um, and so it is, it's in that setting of, of there's all these these towns, you know, th they're fighting for, for, for not only um, – um, some are fighting for allegiance, some are fighting to, to take over. Then you have these invaders that come in and just kind of disrupts the whole flow of what's going on, and, and Abraham leaves in the midst of this, um, and uh, which would, would have been a very good reason uh, for the dad deciding to leave um, – if because it's kind of confusing as to whether God called Abraham while they were still in Ur or if they were in Haran or eh, I don't know whatever it is um, that would have been a very strong motivator for them to have left 
And um, so, anyways, uh, and so then what happens in the course of time is he comes up to her to Haran where his dad dies, and he comes down here. Now in Genesis chapter 12, God starts making these <coughs> these promises with Abraham, and. Uh, Long story short, um, Abraham and his descendants pretty much are in the area of what would later be called Israel, but then it was called Canaan. Um, just this whole area kind of traveling around um, until um, uh, it, until Abraham has a son, Isaac. He stays there. Isaac has a son named Jacob. Long story short, uh, Jacob has 12 sons who, are, who would later be known as the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, and... It's Jacob's son, Joseph, that goes to um, Egypt because he's sold into slavery and becomes second to Pharaoh. Um, now, we don't know which Pharaoh this is, and we don't know the exact time of when this is. We can only guesstimate to some time between the four, 1400s to the 1200s. We really can't know for sure. Um, I'm sorry, that... Um, 1400s to 1200s is when they left Israel in Exodus, uh, at the beginning of Exodus. Um, <laughs> I, I misspoke. Um, Joseph being in Egypt was sometime around like 1800s, 1700s, somewhere in there. I, I, I'm not really sure where, or I mean when, but um, we don't know if Egypt was united at the time that Joseph was there, because because we don't know the exact dates. And we also don't know if... Um, uh, which pharaoh it was that that, Egypt, that um, Joseph served under. We just don't have as much history as we would like on that one. But anyways, around after after after, after Jacob's son Joseph goes to goes to Egypt, eventually um, Jacob and all of his sons end up going there too later on. Um, that's all as recorded in Genesis. Um, but then later after Joseph dies, there's um, there's invaders in Egypt that kind of just um, argue for power. Let's just say. And this is sometime around the 1600s. Um, these are called the um, Huxos, I believe. I believe that's what they're called. But anyways, they're invaders to Egypt. And after this, Egypt, the Egyptians eventually get control back over Egypt, which causes them to look very, very suspiciously at anyone coming from, you know, the the um, uh, they're called Western Semitics, um, but basically anyone coming from over this away over here. <laughs> um, and uh, Egypt already had this idea that they were superior to everyone else. So uh, that explains why there was problems in Exodus with Pharaoh wanting to kill the babies because of all these problems with the invaders and with their already uh, already their idea of being dominant as well. Um, so then uh, Egypt or Exodus picks up about 400 years after uh, Genesis, I believe, 300 or 400, um, somewhere in that area. And uh, Moses ends up leading the people out of um, out of Egypt into um, into the outskirts of the Promised Land. But instead of just going a, a, sh a sure shot like this, they instead go way down here, and then up and back over here. Then they spend 40 years in the desert because they didn't didn't uh, they didn't trust God. And then um, they go way over here where Moses dies, and then uh, Joshua takes over and leads them over into the Promised Land, and that takes us to the events of the book of Joshua. So Israel is, is in the Promised Land. They're back in this area that, oops, back in this area, come on now, that Abraham had started, had, had finished in already, <laughs> um, kind of full circle, in about 1400 to the 1200 somewhere. Um, and then the events of, of, of Joshua and Judges happen, and 1 Samuel picks up where the people are wanting a king, and so uh, uh, Saul becomes king. This is in 1 Samuel. And so the, the kingdom is established around 1050, um, around. Um, and so then the kingdom, um, eventually what happens, excuse me, is after Saul, David comes to power. And David is kind of like the symbol of, of a good king, we're going to talk about foreshadowing in a future lesson, and David is a is is it kind of points to Christ, and we'll talk about that in the, what foreshadowing is in a future lesson. But for right now, David just kind of becomes the, the symbol of, of a righteous king, and um, one that the prophets strongly used to point towards the way that Jesus would be the perfect king, and that his reign would never come to an end. But anyways, um, King David's son Solomon. Uh, 
go does some different stuff, and and he becomes the wisest person in the world. But then, um, he kind of falls to to some foolish things. And, um, long story short, God tells him, okay, so I'm going to take away the kingdom from you, but I'm not going to take it completely out of your hands, and it's not going to be in your reign. It's going to be in your son's reign. Um, and so what happens is King Solomon's son comes to power and uh, makes some bad choices, and the kingdom divides. Basically, ten of the tribes say, you know what, um, son of David, we don't want anything to do with you. Remember, son doesn't necessarily mean direct son. It can mean son by extension, by many generations. It doesn't matter. Um so then the kingdom is divided in 930. Now, this is right about when the books of the prophets start, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all, the, all, those, all those prophets in your Bible. This is about when they start, is, is from, the, from, from when the kingdom is divided until afterwards, and we'll get to that. <coughs> um, so eventually what happens is the northern kingdom, because it splits into north and south, the north is called um, Samaria. Um, also called Israel, and the south is called Judah. Um, and so Israel, the northern kingdom, decides to um, partake of, of, of worshiping other gods. And so uh, God brings a punishment to them, and, and the Assyrians, who um, uh, you can't see so right here on this map, it's Nineveh, that's the capital of Assyria. So Assyria is a world power that rises up and, and just starts taking over everything. And eventually, in seven, at about 722 or so roundabouts there, they head on right down in here and they take over um, Israel. However, Judah is 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 um, not completely taken over at this point. It, it's, it's basically a narrow escape for them. Um, you can read the story in, um, I believe it's 2 Kings, maybe 1 Kings. Um, but basically the king seeks after the Lord and the Lord spares them. And it's just a complete miraculous thing. Um, but that's in 722. And so the southern kingdom is left, but the northern kingdom is not. But then throughout the course of time, the southern kingdom uh, keeps following the northern kingdom's decision to worship false gods. And so Judah, you know, worships false gods, and they don't seek after the Lord and everything, so God brings by a judgment for them. And what happened was the Syrians were conquered by the Babylonians. Now, down here, you can see Babylon right here. They uh, they were always at odds. Babylon was kind of like, uh, I guess you could say, a rebellious city. Um, it had been demolished and then rebuilt. Long story short, um, they come up here, and they take over Assyria, and uh, they come down here and about 586 or so they they make their way down here and they end up conquering judah through the through a progression of attacks but long story short they they, they take it in 586 and what happens is the syrians when they conquered the northern kingdom they took out all the people and kind of moved them around and moved other people in there who would then later be called the samaritans which you'll read about in the gospels and uh with the southern kingdom, what happened is Babylon came in and they did the, pretty much the same thing. They they took the they took the the rest of the people and took them to Babylon, and uh, some other places too, if I remember correctly. Uh, and so uh, Israel as a whole is just left desolate. The northern and southern kingdom are both pretty much uh, pretty much just uh, very few of God's promised people remain there. Um, I think there are just a few in the southern kingdom, maybe some in the northern, but I know there are a lot of outsiders in the northern uh, kingdom. Um, and so then what happens is eventually throughout the course of time, now remember the prophets are speaking this whole time, right here, um, uh, when the, before the Northern Kingdom falls, after the Northern Kingdom falls, and before the Southern Kingdom falls, you've got, you've got a lot of the prophets happening then. But then Persia comes along from over here, okay, and, uh, comes and, and takes over Babylon, and this is in about 539, and their policy, rather than taking everybody out of the country, is to let them go back to their country. Um, whereas Assyria and Babylon got people to do what they wanted by fear, Persia got, got them to do what they wanted by, um, well, by giving them that, that hope. Um, and so then in 539 they, they take back over and then the very next year they say okay Israel you can go back to you can go back to your to your land and that's where we get the books of Ezra and Nehemiah um, and Esther 
Uh, all that kind of happens, and, and, and we'll get to, we'll talk about it more specifically when we get there. But uh, that's where all those books happen. And Ezekiel happens uh, um, after Judah falls. Uh, Jeremiah happens before Judah falls. Um, Isaiah happens before, I think, before the northern kingdom falls. And so... <coughs> And so you really just have this this wide uh, wide time frame going on, uh, but Ezra and Nehemiah is happening right about this time. In fact, Ezra picks up um, with the first immigration in, in 538, where the people, uh, the first group of people, came back to uh, the Promised Land. And then eventually, there's a total of three migrations um, of the people from ba of, of the of the Israelites going back to um, back to Jerusalem area, uh, the land of Israel. Um, and there, so there's three immigrations or migrations, I guess you should say. Um, and uh, they they stay there and they rebuild the temple, they rebuild the city, they they put back up the walls, um, and that's pretty much what happens in Ezra and Nehemiah. Uh, and then and then the book of Esther happens between that. We'll get to it later, but um, uh, and she saves the people who are in. Uh, I want to say. I want to say the Persian capital, but I don't remember exactly where they were. Maybe Babylon. I don't remember. But anyway, she say we'll get to it when we get there. Um, she saves the she saves them from mass genocide, and Alexander the Great, who you might have uh, might remember from high school, um, who's over here, right, somewhere like here. Let me think, right there. So yeah, right over here, uh, comes over. Um, and spreads Greek culture as he goes. Um, uh, it's called Helen, uh, Hellenizing someone when you when you make their culture and you make their language and everything Greek. But anyways, that's 330s, uh, somewhere in there. And, and so he comes over and he, he takes over everything. Um, and uh, so then uh, that 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 goes on. For, uh, uh, and, and then pretty much as soon as he as he takes over everything, almost as soon as he does, he dies. And his land is split up between his generals, and there, there's a tug of war over the land of Israel for a while until finally the Maccabean Revolt, uh, where the Jews just say, you know what, enough is enough, and um, they revolt against him. Um, it's kind of a kind of a whole thing that was happening with the uh, <coughs> with the sacrifices, but um, we'll, move, we'll I'll just blow right past that. Um, and so they rebel, and this is where we get some of those books like uh, First and Second. I think there's Third Maccabees. Um, this is this is when that happens, and and Josephus I think talks about um, this too. I don't remember exactly, but um, it's been a while since I read some of the some of those. Uh, but they, they they rebel, and things go more or less good throughout the throughout the years. Some things go better than other, others. Let's just say, until finally. Um, there's pretty much two people vying for, or yeah, vying for power, and uh, Rome comes in and they get help from Rome, and Rome just kind of stays. Uh, and that's in uh, 63 uh, BC. Remember, we're still in BC, and it, and time goes down as you're in BC. The the further ahead you get until you get to zero, and then it starts counting back up in 80. I hope that, that makes sense. Um, okay. So then, uh, the Roman occupation is, is where the, where the gospel picks up with with Jesus and everything. That's what's going on. Is Rome now has control, and uh, yeah, so they have they have someone over the area uh, working as a king, Herod the Great, and um, he hears about Jesus being born in six BC. Um, so probably around like five BC or so, and he gets uh, he gets um, you know kind of um, persnickety about it. He thinks that um, his power is going to get taken away. Just a real psychopath, anyways. But uh, long story short, he goes and kills kills all the all the, all the uh, kids in that town, and uh, Jesus is safely in I believe Egypt at this point, point. Um, and. Then eventually they move back after Herod the Great dies in I think 4 BC or something like that. So uh, then the events of the Bible happen. Um, I mean, sorry, the events of the Gospels happen, uh, and Jesus dies in around 30, 33, somewhere in there. Um, and pretty much right after that, um, you know, he's got his his resurrection, and he spends spends like maybe a couple months, maybe um, 
with his disciples, and then he ascends, uh, you know, however much longer. And then it's 40 days after he ascends, if I remember correctly, I, it's getting a little bit jumbled right now, but I believe it's about a month after he ascends, um, when they're on the upper room in the, in the start of Acts chapter 2, um, and that's where the, where the church gets its start. So, um... The Christian Church has its has its origin really in Judaism in in the Jewish uh, ways. However, um, it really became the 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 start of the church in about the 3033s, because um, the church was originally originally thought of as being Jewish. Um, only the Jews really, the Jews and the Christians really noticed the difference between their between their doctrine. As far as Rome was concerned, they thought it was kind of the same thing. Eventually, um, they started to see a distinction between them, and and um, and so things kind of changed for them there. So then, what happens is, in the, as the Book of Acts uh, details, uh, they start being sent out and whatnot, um, and they start kind of breaking up from there uh, and Acts details this Paul's uh, three missionary journeys um, it was in 47 49 and 52 Oops. And, but then eventually uh, Paul thinks that he should head back to Rome so he heads to Jerusalem and um, gets arrested there and spends I think it's two years there and then he's sent over to Rome um, and then eventually he's let loose after a couple of years, and he goes around possibly to Spain, maybe. I, I really don't know. Uh, and then he comes back and gets arrested again, and he's killed right, ab right around the same time Peter is um, under Emperor Nero. Um, and then shortly after Peter and Paul both die, uh, the church, I mean not the church, the city of Jerusalem is destroyed <coughs> along with the temple. Everything is destroyed. Um, yeah, uh, and the Jews, uh, or the Christians, I guess, uh, flee to, I think it's Pella, if I remember correctly. Um, John, the bro the, um, um, the one who wrote the gospel, um, go, is, he goes to, um, Ephesus, where, um, eventually, um, uh, another emperor comes up and he gets exiled to the island of Patmos in about 96, and that's when he writes the book of Revelation. Um, and that's the last uh, of the books that are that's in your Bible, um, is the book of Revelation. Both um, in order of, like if you turn to the last book of your Bible, it's going to be Revelation, but also it's the last, latest written book of your Bible. Um so then after that, you have, like, the church fathers that people talk about, like, Origen and all them. And uh, that's pretty much from one hundreds from the 100s all the way through to, like, I think it's the 300s. Um, and then the imperialized church, that's where um, the emperor comes and says, you know what? All right, all you Christians, it's, it's, it's totally cool now to be a Christian. You know, no more persecution. And uh, this is just kind of what we're going to do. And that was around the 300s, 330, somewhere in there. Uh Hmm, maybe 313. Somewhere around there. Moral of the story being persecution just abruptly stops, and um, the church is faced for the first time in their existence with a completely different kind of thing. They're recognized by the entire empire, and um, it's totally fine. No more persecution. Um, after they've been experiencing persecution for 300 years, this is just a complete change uh, for them. And so a lot of people respond in a lot of different ways. Um, and we get monks and different things like that. Um, but anyways, Rome ends up falling in, in around 410. And the Reformation with Martin Luther is in the 1500s. So that just kind of gives you a real basic um, summation of, of all the different things that happen. As you can tell, um, there's just a lot of stuff happening. A lot of stuff happening. Um so these are just some pictures of, of Israel. This is by the coast on the east uh, side of, of uh, Israel. This is up on the northern uh, northern tip. This is around the, the middle-ish area, I think, around the Judah, Judean wilderness, I think. I'm not positive about that, though. This is uh, central southern, I believe. Um, I think real close to what's called the Negev. Um, and this is around the Sea of Galilee. You can see how green it is. 
Um, this is the Dead Sea. Um, it the salt is actually salt deposits are actually so uh, so dense that you can uh, sit in the water, and uh, the coastline is just huge, huge, huge uh, uh, salt deposits. And this is on the wet. Um, I'm sorry, I said that the coast was on the east. The coast is on the west. This is a picture of the east coast of Israel. <coughs> Not coast. Ah, I don't know why I keep misspeaking. Okay. Let's try this again. This picture here. Um, here is on the west coast. Okay, that's in the north. That's central somewhere is about. Um, central southern. This is the Sea of Galilee. That's yeah, a Dead Sea. Here we go. So then this is on the eastern side of Israel, um, which is a very rocky and dry area. Um, yeah. As you can see from this map, there's just a wide variety of, of landscape. You've got really, really, really low here in the Dead Sea, and you've got pretty high here on the mountains here. Um, and you can see how there's ravines and whatnot. And the land really did dictate how people traveled. They wouldn't just go. You know what I mean? They had to, like, let's say, for instance, go and, and go down here and around and about. Do, 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 do. See what I mean? Uh, go through specific crossing points. Um, and highways very much so were like that. Um, also, once again, depending on what was going on with the water would depend what was going on with the with the civilization, with the cities, etc. Um but Israel is a very vast, uh, not vast, um, that's wrong, uh, diverse. Israel is a very diverse land, as you can tell. Um, but that's that's the whole of the Bible there. You've got Genesis picking up from the beginning of creation, however long ago that was. And then you've got, you know, on through the generations to around 2000 B.C., um, with Abraham and, and Isaac and Jacob, and then you have down in, in 1400s or 1200s BC, somewhere in there, when Israel was finally in the Promised Land, and then you've got um, the Promised Land vacant in 586 BC, and then you've got them returning in uh, 538 BC, and then you've got um, uh, Jesus being born in 6 BC, and then you've got the uh, New Testament church in 30 AD, and then you've got, you know, it's just amazing how to see the story unfold. Just amazing to see the story unfold is what I'm really saying. Um, hopefully this this kind of brought some clarity as to what's going on. Um, remember that the book should never be taken out of the historical context. History is a fantastic thing, but it's important to realize that you cannot remove the setting up that a book was written in. If you take, for instance, Pride and Prejudice and remove it from the time when it was written, uh, or The Scarlet Letter, or, I mean, go down any uh, historical work, and you remove it from its, from its culture, from its setting, it doesn't make as much sense. But to really understand the Bible, you have to see it as it was meant to be understood to them back then, and then you can understand it as it applies to us here and now. I hope that that, that, that really clarifies. Um, if there's any questions or comments, leave them in the, in the comments below, and I will do my best to respond. Uh, thank you very much.